Hello, I'm HS Blue, and I'm going to teach you how to set up the RetroTink 4K. I spent hours researching this, playing around with this with my 4K monitor and my 240Hz 1080p monitor, and I've learnt a lot. If you play interlaced games or progressive scan games, I'm going to teach you how to set that up too. You need two AAA batteries before starting, but the most important buttons are these three at the top, input, out, SCL and profile. Those are really important. And then number one and number two, you're going to be using those with the profile. Um, the menu is important. I'm shaking a lot. The back button you use. Um, gain and phase is also really important. And gen is important. Everything else, you don't really have to worry about that. I turned on the tink with the on button and you can tell it's on because there's a little tiny green light at the front. And you know you're on the screen because it says HDMI no signal. Now that's okay. Um, to set it up, you want to press the input button. If you have red, yellow, and white cables, then you want to go to this one. Uh, if you have S video with that, then you go here. Um, I have a SCART cable, and so I'm choosing this one. Um, so I hit enter. And now I'm on an interlaced game. So this is a setting for SCART interlaced. And now I'm going to switch to progressive scan. And now I'm going to go to this one. This is the SCART cable for progressive. So, so interlaced progressive. Now the thing that I look at for delay is the um, SCL button. I hit that. And then I'm greeted with this screen. And down here is where I see the lag. Um, now I'm on triple buffer mode. So let's fix that. I'm going to go to the out button, the middle top one up here. And sync lock. Triple buffer is bad. It adds a lot of delay. Um, and you don't really need it, at least in majority of games that um, I play. I don't need them. Um, gen and frame, they, like, they do the same thing. You don't have to hit OK. It instantly applies it when you move to that destination. HDR is garbage. I don't recommend that. And then you go down here, um, 4K60. So it automatically, automatically sets it to 4K. Um, I'm on a 1080p 240Hz monitor. And I tested between 1080p and 4K on my 1080p monitor. And it does make a difference on your screen. I don't know which one's better. You're going to have to play test that yourself. But um, I think I also noticed a difference in 120 hertz. Um, 144 hertz, I'm not sure about. Um, you're going to have to play test that um, if you have a monitor like that. Uh, I'm going to have to do a lot of play testing. Um, but yeah, I just have it set to 4K60. It doesn't add any lag compared from 1080p. No lag gets added. But it does add um, delay or lag when you go to 100 or 120 um, frames per second. You can see the delay is only 1.7, and that's the lowest I was, I'm able to get it. This is the lowest number you can get. I'm going to set it to 144 Hz, 1080p. You'll see here that the delay has gone from 1.7 to 8.6, but it's worth noting that one frame in a 60 frames per second game is 16.7 milliseconds. So you're losing like half a not, not even one frame of delay. It's pretty minuscule. But it does scare me, so I am sticking to um, the 4K60 for now, because I'm not really sure. I need to do some more playtesting. Now, you might notice the black bars at the top and bottom. You can finally get rid of them. So I'm going to press the left on here, which is um, on this menu. Uh, but you'll notice that the more I crop, the more delay I get. See how it's gone from 1.7 to 1.9? Now, I've cropped the top and bottom, and it feels like I'm full screen. If I go back, it feels like it's full screen, which is great. Like on my actual monitor. Even though it adds a little bit more delay, I think I'll take that. Now, to get accurate picture quality, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to hit the gain button. Um, it's going to like scan the screen and I'm going to hit the 
um, one right under gain, this one. Um, and it's doing the phasing, and this is like, cal you're basically calibrating the console to this game. So I'm just going to do this a few times. I don't know if that does anything, but um, now, you know, it, it's more accurate to this specific game. Now, you might not like how dark the screen is, and so to fix that, I'm going to go to the menu, Advanced, and I'm going to go Color Correction. And here, I actually move Input Gain, this one. This one seems to have, like, the best... You don't lose quality when you go up here. Um, I also turn up the saturation because I, I like it. It makes me happy, you know. Like ten, like this. I I'm probably gonna turn down the saturation on my capture card now. But yeah, um, I did like fifteen more and ten more like that. Um, yeah, this is nice. Do what you want though. Do. Do what feels right for your monitor though. A setting that is good to know but it's not needed is this de-interlacing setting. Uh, you want motion active, it's already on motion active, um, at least for 3D games. Let's say you want to turn on the tink and start up straight away. I'm going to hit the profile, save as new, and I'm going to save it to... Um, I saved my this whole setup to my second button right here. So all I have to do is turn it on, and um, hit 2 and it's ready. Profile 1 is for interlaced games because this game starts in interlaced and then I have to go in the settings and switch it to progressive scan. So I open the game up and I start with profile 1 which is interlaced and then I switch the game into progressive scan and then I move to profile 2 which is for progressive scan games. It's pretty easy to set up. I'm glad I set it up like this and I'm excited to use it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.